All right, it is late on a Saturday night on the eve of the start of the 2022 NFL season for the San Francisco 49ers, but there is some important 49ers news to get to. This is the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of you have been having a fantastic weekend. Cannot wait for 49ers Bears tomorrow. Tonight, went to the Bill Burr Show, comedian, downtown Dallas. Absolutely hilarious with 20,000 people there. Saw the notification about George Kittle, so I had to come home to give you a video and this is why you subscribe to the channel for 49ers updates like this but also watch party coming your way tomorrow for the game live play-by-play audience interaction taking all of your questions post game show we'll be live on call and so come celebrate the return of 49ers football tomorrow we'll be going live 15 minutes before kickoff one o'clock eastern 10 a.m. Pacific right here on the Niners Report. Hit that red sub button, turn on those notifications. So we begin with this, and it pertains to George Kittle, and then we'll get to some other 49ers news items that involve them going up against the Chicago Bears tomorrow. So George Kittle, according to Matt Mayoko, NBC Sports Bay Area, probably the most trusted upon 49ers reporter out there. He tweeted this moment to go here on Saturday night that George Kittle, after not practicing all week because of a groin injury. The team doesn't want to take any unnecessary risks, he said verbatim this early in the season, so he is not expected to be active against the Bears in week one. This is a storyline that we've been talking about throughout this week, and obviously it has a lot of implications for this 49ers offense. Trey Lance now is the firmly entrenched starting quarterback, and when he's without a security blanket like George Kittle at that tight end position, which that position can oftentimes serve as that for a young quarterback and is the best all-around multifaceted tight end in the National Football League. This is obviously really big news for Trey Lance. He's without a guy who is dynamic in catching the football, can run and make plays all over the field, both through the run game as a blocker in the past game, but also sometimes a guy like this can just bail you out and bail out a young quarterback who is struggling, trying to find a groove, who's trying to get his feet wet, find a rhythm. And that's what George Kittle can do for you. Let's say it's third and 10. You check down after going through your progressions, you dump it off third and five, and he's able to pick up those extra five yards to keep the chains moving. That allows you to take a deep breath. That allows a guy like Trey Lance to get a little bit more confidence, and that is what George Kittle can bring to the table. We are talking about just a fantastic overall football player who, when he's not on the field, there is going to be a sizable drop. And not is it just because of what he does in the pass game. It's what he does and the aid that he provides in the run game. George Kittle is one of the greatest run-blocking tight ends that we've seen in recent memory. He is so special in that way, especially with what Kyle Shanahan wants to do in this offense. You can talk about the 1,000-yard seasons back a couple years ago, 2019. He was fantastic. That's when he got that big deal going into 2020. But a player like this is paid as such, and he's respected like he is, not just because of what he does through the aerial attack. It's also what he does from a leadership perspective and what he does in the ground game and George Kittle really is just a special player so obviously when Trey Lance doesn't have him and now he's going to go to Ross Dwelly Charlie Warner who are certainly capable backup tight ends this is a significant development for week one now is it the right move to not play him with a groin injury that could potentially become worse if he tries to play the first game of the season and then he'll miss several instead of maybe just missing one or a couple yeah it's probably smart to take that approach but injuries for George Kittle, a source of frustration for a lot of Niners fans out there since he signed that big deal because oftentimes he has missed a lot of games. So with that, I do ask you this. George Kittle looks like he's going to be out. Who do you have winning this game on Sunday? I'm going with the Niners. I don't think they cover that seven-point spread. I think it's going to be a six-point game, three-point game within one score. Let me know in the comment section if you have the Niners or you have the Bears. Get those predictions in right now. Other injury news items and then roster items to get to here on this late-night Niners report. Daniel Brunskill, the hope was that he was going to be able to play backup center, can also play guard. He's played every single game the last two years. 
He's been limited for a little while because of a hamstring injury that he suffered a couple of weeks ago. He is not going to be available against the Chicago Bears. And again, going back to this offensive line, it's a little bit of a concern. Jake Brendel goes down. Now you start to have some serious questions at that center spot or at that guard spot as well. Daniel Brunskill, at the very least, gives you really good depth, but we've seen what he's been able to do against a player like Aaron Donald. Shifting gears to some elevations from the practice squad to the active game day roster. There are two of them that we want to discuss here. Malik Turner elevated to the game day roster. So too to Sean Gibson. Now, when these two players didn't make the 53-man roster, I had said it live on the 49ers report. Appreciate everybody who tuned into that live show. Around 10,000 people hopped on and joined us. I had said, look. You know, especially with a guy like Malik Turner, because of his special teams ability, I'd be surprised if the Niners are able to bring him back onto the practice squad because I thought he had value elsewhere. But if he was able to come back, this was huge. This guy is a very good fifth or sixth wide receiver on a roster. Anytime he's been able to get some snaps at that wide receiver spot, he's popped. But the real value with Malik Turner is on special teams, where he plays as a gunner and he played really well throughout the preseason, making a couple of big plays forcing a turnover having a big tackle Malik Turner the special teams addition considering how poor the Niners were on special teams last year coming to the active game day roster is something that I expected it's something that I wanted to see and that's what's going to happen on Sunday there's also a pretty cool story with Malik Turner I wonder if the broadcast is going to cover this tomorrow if he makes any plays but Malik Turner is from central Illinois Springfield Illinois it's a state capital in that state there, and he played high school football at Sacred Heart Griffin under legendary head coach Ken Leonard, who's won multiple state championships. His son, Derek Leonard, is the coach of Rochester High School. He's won several state championships. So the lineage of football success within that family is pretty special, but Springfield, Illinois, about center of the state, hour and a half from St. Louis. I actually worked in Springfield for a couple of years. That's how I know Malik Turner as well as the Leonards, but it's in central Illinois, about three, three plus hours away from Chicago. He goes back to his home state, gets elevated to the game day roster. If he makes a play, that's going to be pretty significant for himself, knowing the circumstances there with family friends and Ken Leonard expected to be on hand. He also played his college football at Illinois. So a homecoming and he gets elevated to the active game day roster. And then lastly with Deshaun Gibson, with Jimmy Ward on IR, he gets elevated to the game day roster. And this is also somewhat of an expectation that this could happen for Gibson. And he plays against his former team in the Chicago Bears where he spent the last couple of seasons. But without Jimmy Ward, because he's on IR, Gibson, as we predicted, that's why you subscribe to the channel. We're oftentimes ahead of it. I had said he's going to be that next safety elevated, especially with Jimmy Ward on IR. So this is a guy who came into the league back in 2012. He made it to the Pro Bowl with the Cleveland Browns several years ago. Stops with the Houston Texans, Chicago Bears, a capable player who has played a ton. And he can give you at least a veteran boost on Sunday without Jimmy Ward because Talano Hufanga, Tarvarius Moore, George Odom, they're going to get a lot of snaps there. Um, and then Tashawn Gibson probably is going to play against his former team as well. So that does it for all of the news items on the 49ers front. Appreciate all of you for tuning in late night or potentially early on Sunday morning. A reminder, we'll be live for a watch party. It's going to be absolutely awesome doing a super chat competition between Chicago Bears Now and a sub competition with Chicago Bears Now. So if you made it this far, make sure you sub so we beat the Chicago Bears on the field and inside the walls of chat sports. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Cannot wait. If you're pumped up for week one, hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. 